today, get out a piece of paper and pencil. Uh, put all your books under your desk. We're going to have a test. Uh, tonight, we're going to have a test for a Christian. We're going to test, we'll give you a test tonight and, put, and see if you, uh, what kind of grade you make. I think there'll be four or five of these things, and uh, uh, maybe there'll be more than that, but you'll get them at about uh, maybe 12 per, per point. If you get one right, it's 12. If you get two points, that's 24. If you get three points, that's 36. Um, I'm guessing at it somewhere along in there for seven of them all together. Um, so let's, um, uh, 6, 72, 84, 12, maybe 14, maybe 14 points, 7 into 100. Uh, let's, um, 14, can you think on your feet like that? Don't give me a hard time. All right, uh, let's, uh, 6 times 15 is 100, so 7 times 14 is close, 13. My goodness, if I can do it standing up here, y'all can do it sitting there. Seven, seven times 13. 13, 13, 39, 52, 65. Well, that's close enough. About 30, give yourself about 30, 14 points per answer. I think that's about right, 14. All right, Dan, uh, second, uh, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, Every Christian once in a while ought to set yourself down and say, look, I'm going to take stock and see what kind of a person I am and a Christian I am. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. I want to give you some tests for a Christian. You have tests to get a job. You have a test to receive a diploma. You have a test to get any kind of degree. If you go get your license, you have to take a test. Get your permit, you have to take a test. You pass that, you go get a, a test, you have to drive a little bit to get your driver's license. You have to take a test to be anything. Uh, and, and you have to get, take a test uh, for a business. You have to take a test uh, to, when they test your eyes or check your, anything like this. Uh, there's tests that you have to take. Tonight... I'd like to give you a test as a Christian. So you're going to see what kind of Christian you are by these tests. Number one, there's what I call the weather test. The weather test. Now what does that mean? That means uh, our, uh, we're sailing on the sea of life. And two quick little questions to tell you this. Are you a sailboat Christian or are you a tugboat Christian? That means this, a sailboat Christian is out on the waves and just whichever the wind, way the wind blows, it'll blow that boat all over the place. And did you know a lot of people are just like that? They'll live their life, they'll say, well, I'm a Christian, but whichever way the wind blows out there in the world, that's which way they'll go. And, uh, excuse me, that's what we call a sailboat Christian. Uh, the wind blows you whichever way it goes. Don't be a kind of Christian that just goes whichever way the wind blows. That means when you're at work and the people are talking about going to a party somewhere and they're going to get high, get drunk, you just blow right along with them. And then when we come to church, everybody starts crying, going, oh, you just blow right along with them too and get in here. And all. Then when you go to school, guys are cussing, telling dirt, you just blow right along, right along with them. And, and then you come to church, people singing in a choir, you just blow right I mean, don't be such a don't be such a wishy-washy child of God. Don't be a sailboat Christian. Be a tugboat. A tugboat has its own motor. And a tugboat will get behind and it'll plow right on through. It don't matter how the wind blows. It don't matter how the sea tosses. It don't matter which way the waves go. That little tugboat will just keep on, keep it on, keep on, keep it on, keep on, keep it on, keep on, keep it on. And I'm going to tell you tonight what we need in our church, whatever church needs, what Shining Light Baptist Church needs. We need a bunch of you people here tonight that will say, hey, I'm going to get in this thing. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'll be here every time the doors open. Bless the Lord. I'll be faithful. I'll serve God. I'll do right. I'm going to be the tugboat Christian. I'm in, preacher. I'll pass the weather test. Passed that one? Have you passed that one? 
Amen. Plow on, brother. Your anchor holds. Plow on. Be, uh, we, are, we are living in a post-Christian era, people. That means, that means this. Uh, our society has moved past our beliefs and the doctrine and trust in the Bible as a whole. You watch TV, you watch any of the news, I can't hardly stand to stomach it. I watch just a little bit of the news, just enough to keep up with anything big happening. They just run their mouth and they create stories just to keep you keep you watching. They're all everybody's worried about Iran now and everybody's worried about this and that. There's no telling what's gonna happen. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you 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 gotta make up your mind in this post Christian era to still be a Christian. You see, years ago, most officials held to Christian beliefs, even if they weren't Christian. Years ago, most public school teachers and te- taught Christian beliefs, even if they were not Christian. Years ago, most TV shows, back in the old days, Andy Griffith and all them, they taught Christian principles, even if they weren't a Christian show. But it's not that way anymore. Those days are gone. You hear me? Those days are over. The news, the politics, uh, the entertainment, even Nickelodeon. Somebody sent me a... A uh, video, that little girl on Nickelodeon, that little Allie Brooker, whatever her name is, that's such sleazy trash. An adult shouldn't see stuff like that. And it's on TV on Nickelodeon for little girls and little boys, 9, 10, 11 years old. We're living in a post Christian generation. Let's make up our mind to be a tugboat and stay right with God. Number two, you ready for the second one? It's the worry test. Not only the weather test, the worry test. Now, what is the worry test? The worry test is this. Faith ends where worry uh, begins. And worry ends where faith begins. That means if you sit around and worry all the time, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about that? How are we going to make it through this? How are we going to make it through that? I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid the roof's going to fall in. I'm afraid that. I'm afraid my, my mama's going to die. I'm afraid that. I'm afraid that. I'm afraid that. Now, we all are affected by that. And everybody here, uh, at one time or another in your life, has a bad case of just worrying. The devil likes to make us worry. But you don't accomplish worry. They say worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you don't get anywhere. It don't put one dollar in your pocket to worry. It don't pay one bill to sit around and worry it. You ain't doing a bit of good sitting up at night saying, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do about my marriage problem? What am I going to do? You know what? Faith ends worry. You've got to learn to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do the best I can and work hard and live right, and I'm going to trust you for the things in my life. That's the worry test. Amen. Psalm 37 and verse 1 said, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, because of sin, people like that. The Bible said, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. That the worry test. Number three. Number three, the worldly test. The worldly test. Are you listening? What is the worldly test? Now, everybody here should have heard preachers preach against the world. If you go to a church where you never hear a preacher preach against the things of the world, you are in the wrong church. Everybody needs to go to a church where the preacher preaches against stuff. It's not enough just to get up here and say God loves you and you're awesome. And just half of that's true. Uh, I'll tell you, brother, it's not enough just to get up and say, hey, isn't it wonderful how great he is, how great he is. That's all true, but that ain't enough. You need to be warned about what's wrong. You need to be warned. These kids in here tonight need to be told what's wicked, what will hurt them, how, how the world will hurt them. And I'm telling you what your Bible says. Y'all listening? It said, love not the world. Love not the world. Love not the world. Love not the world. It is not right to love this world. This world crucified our Savior. This world don't care. All of us died and went to hell. It is wrong to love the world. 
You say, what is the world, preacher? It's not the dirt and the rocks. That ain't what he's talking about. He ain't talking about the earth. He's talking about the world's system, their beliefs, their lifestyle, their, their, their habits, their philosophy. Amen? It's wrong. Bible said we're not to talk. Listen, people. Listen to me. You hear me tonight. I seen a pastor of a certain church. And I say something, people get mad at me for saying it. Lordy mercy, people. Uh, 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 one of these cool churches. And the pastor had on like a Marilyn Manson shirt or something like that. And then another uh, pastor had on a shirt of ima said, Imagine. Imagine. John Lennon's old song, Imagine. I'm going to tell you something tonight. John Lennon's song, Imagine, was one of the most evil, wicked, demonic-inspired songs of all that generation. Are you listening to me tonight? John Lennon said, Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, just earth and sky. Imagine all the people uh, living all together. Uh, you know, we, you may say I'm a dreamer, but you'll come and join us and the world will be as one. That's a doctrine straight out of hell. That's a demonic doctrine. That pastor is led by the devil and is partaken of the world. You know, you have a lot of fuss about wearing a tie. I don't say you have to wear a tie. I wear a tie because I respect my office. If ever senator in Congress has wears a tie to have a congress meeting, bless the Lord, my job's 10,000 times more important than his. Well, I'm not saying you have to. The Bible don't say you have to. But for God's sake, don't wear a rock and roll T-shirt that gives honor to the devil and this world. Listen, girls, there ain't a girl in here, there ain't a teenage girl in here that don't know what the world is. Now, you may act like you don't. No, you boys too. But listen, buddy, when you see a girl walk in and she ain't dressed right, every one of you say, oh, look at her. Oh, look at her. You know why you do that? Because you know it ain't right. You know it ain't. You say, well, Brother Danny, it's 100 degrees. I know it's 100 degrees. You will live. Amen. Don't dress like the world dresses. Don't go out nearly naked. You can't even take your kids to a, a place to have fun anymore. I, I, people out there running around like they're in, look like Lord, a nudist colony or something like that. Are you passing the worldly test? Well, people say, I heard people say, you ought to, people ought to be able to look at you and tell you're a Christian. That, that's not always true because sometimes we just blend in and people can't, and that may not be true that people can look at you and tell you're a Christian. But I tell you what should be true. They, can't, they shouldn't look at you and think you ain't one. Amen? They shouldn't look at you and say, ain't no way she's a Christian. Look how she's dressed. They shouldn't say, there ain't no way to look at him a Christian. Look what he's doing. Now, you little bony-legged boys, it's a little bit different for you. Uh, but I, I tell you, the world's a little bit different. It's your music. It's your movies. It's, your, it's the places you go. It's the thing you want. But listen, girls, for you, it's dress, buddy. I'm telling you, it's dress for the girls. And they say, if it walks like a duck and waddles like a duck and goes quack, quack like a duck, they, people say, that's a duck. And if you walk like the world and talk like the world and live like the world and look like the world, people's going to say they're the world. The worldly test. Lord, have mercy. We're living in a day when people... Uh, I, 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 I heard on news the other day, I can't hardly watch the news without getting... I was like, ugh, ugh, both sides are crazy. They're off, they're way off. That's all it is. They're off, they're way off. Heard them on there the other day, and they had a little segment on there that all these feminists were mad and aggravated. They want to do away with any reference to men and male as it is, at period. There should be no difference. Anything that a man say, anything you have man that don't have woman is wrong. And there was a group on there fussing about downtown in New York, they have these they have these grates on the city and everything where they go down in there and sewer and water and everything, the manhole, and they were mad because there was manhole. They were upset 
They said it shouldn't be called a manhole. That's sexist. I thought, you want us to call him a woman hole? Does that make you feel better if we did that? That's not really something to be proud of. Really, there you're not supposed to say the postman. It could be a postwoman or a post person. Oh, you can't say that? That's got son in it. Person. Can't say madam. That's Adam. Amen. You can't and no, no reference. But look, ladies, accept it. I didn't write the Bible. My job's to preach it. That book said that God made the woman for the man. I didn't write it. Get mad, stomp out the back door, kick the slacks out of your crib, throw your baby bottle down, stomp up and down, and it won't change one blessed thing. Amen. Woman hole. Lord have mercy. I tell you, they're, they're mad. They're mad. They're, you know what? You know what I got to thinking? My mind is, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a reactionary. I react. I people. And immediately when I start thinking, I'm firing back, I'm firing back. So you know what I start thinking? Of all the old scary devil movies I've ever seen in my life, there has never been one where the devil was a woman. So we're going to do that too, right? Let's make the devil a woman and all the demons female. Let's be fair. Be closer to the truth. I better shut up. Shut up. Shut up, Danny. Uh, uh, listen, people. If, if, you, if you're a sexist, then it should be all right to make the devil a woman. In, in the new Bibles, in the beginning, she, God created, and she said this, that. Okay, let's have the devil being a woman talking to Eve. Never do that. Did you know that if that they say it's not fair, a woman should be the president, a woman should be the president. If men got on there and said a man should be the president, they'd die. I'm telling you, all I'm telling you is uh, this world ain't right. This world ain't right. All these people fussing about America. I hate America, I hate America. And you know, talking about, listen, you know what they do in Iran? Y'all listen to me? You know what they're doing in Iran? There's men in Iran selling one of their kidneys for $500 to feed their family. The United States ain't that, we ain't that bad off. You live in a country where you have to go have surgery and sell one of your kidneys for $500 to feed your family and then tell me how bad it is here. God's been good to us here in this country. Amen. Number four, you passed the weather test. You passed the the worry test. You passed the worldly test. Number four, the wallet test. Everybody shout hallelujah, glory to God. You ought to jump up and throw your hands up and say, "Woo! I don't have to worry about that, preacher. Will you pass the wallet test? That means are you caught up? Do you give like you're supposed to? Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 said, Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Now, I ain't stupid. I've been reading the Bible a long time. Don't write me letters. All these people, there's thousands of people going to hear this sermon and somebody right in there saying, oh, preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. That's Old Testament. And the truth is, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they gave tithes. Uh, Abraham paid tithes before Moses was born. There was no law uh, in the book of Genesis. There was no law. That was before the law. And they paid tithes. They said, I'll give you a tenth of everything I make, God. They gave their tithes under law. People who say stuff like that don't know their Bible very good. They're amateur Bible teachers and readers. You say, well, you can't show me that in the New Testament. I can show you where Jesus said not to leave it undone. I cannot show you that in the epistles of Paul. I can tell, show you where Paul the apostle said every one of us should lay aside on the first day of the week on Sunday as God has prospered him and for heaven's sake according to Acts chapter 2 and 3 where they gave it all a New Testament Christian ought to give at least as much as an Old Testament Jew under the law. They gave 100% in the book of Acts if you want New Testament 
<laughs> Don't show you ignorance. Just give you tithes, give you offering, honor God, and he'll bless you for it. Amen. That's right, buddy. That's right. One man said, he said, well, I just can't give that much money to the church. And now they're giving 80% of their money to the drug dealer. I know people can't afford to tithe, but they, they'll give 60% of their income to the ABC store. You'll give it to something. You'll give it to something. I am a firm believer. When you get your money, your check, your whatever you, however you get paid, that if you get $500, $50 of that automatically belongs to him and an offering on top of that and then any other special thing you want to help out with. Amen. That's right. That's right. Remember, you ain't having to sell your kidney for $500 to live. The wallet test. Some people don't pay their tithes. They wind up giving 75% of it to a lawyer. Number five. Number five. Did you pass the weather test? Did you pass the worry test? You say, Lord, preacher, I've made a zero so far. Well, that's, that's what I'm trying to do, help you. Did you pass the worldly test? Did you pass the wallet test? Number five, the work test. The work test. Think how much work uh, say, that you work for a living. Most of you have jobs. Most of you people in here work a job. Nine to five, seven to three, six to six, uh, seven to seven. What, most people in here work some kind of a public job, and uh, we, I, I, you're, you're like me. You, you are on a salary. You're not on uh, what do you call it? Uh, where, you, where they give you so much? No, not no. Where you get so much if you sell so much? You know, uh, commission, commission. That's what I'm saying about. You're not on production. You're not on commission. Most of you work a, a job where you get paid so much every week, just like me. I do. You do. Most of us do. You have to live within that, that income, whatever that is. And most of us work for a living. Most of us work. I don't, I don't preach for money. I don't preach for money. I, as a matter of fact, I don't get paid for preaching. People say that. So he says, oh, the preacher gets paid for No, 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 no. No, I was preaching before there ever was a Shining Light Baptist Church, and I'll be preaching uh, when I'm gone from here, Lord willing, if that ever happened. I'd start out preaching on the street, and if I don't have a church to preach in, I'd still preach on the street. And even if I do, you don't preach for money. Now, now pastoring, that's work. I mean, dealing with one mess right after another, and I am not stretching it by no means. One mess, everybody's mad about this. Somebody's upset about that. Something blows up over here. Something blows up. That's work. And you'll work yourself to death and run yourself to death. There's plenty to do. And some of you have jobs where you physically labor and sweat, and that's good. That's good. It's good for you. You should work. Everybody in here should work work physically hard and sweat and, and mop floors or dig ditches or do something that work makes you work like God said. But I'm going to ask you something. Do you pass the work test in the church? I think everybody here ought to say, you know what, Pastor, Brother Danny, uh, we had a visiting couple right back there this morning. I asked three or four of y'all to go speak to them. I mention this quite often, and, and, and really, I, I see church members. Here's, say, say, here's visitors right here, Rebecca and that weird-looking boy. Uh, and I said, no, that's Justin. He's all right. Uh, and, I, and here's what church members do. Brand new people sitting right there. I've seen y'all walking by. I'm just like, yeah, don't even look at them. You say, well, Brother Danny, I don't know. Maybe you need to get familiar with who you go to church with. It might be a good ministry. That might be a good work. That might be somebody, the Lord might put it on somebody's heart right here tonight. Say, so, you know what? From now on, I'm just going to start looking for new faces and, 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 and witness to them and, and tell them we're glad they're here. And be, That's a good work in a church. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff to do. I'll tell you one thing. Don't complain about it. We've had people, we've had people, this church, uh, get sick and have to go put in the hospital or, or, get mad and backslid. I heard one man, it's been a few years ago, got mad and backslid and did not come to church for about three months. And somebody talked to him. He said, there ain't been one person from our church come see me. 
And that's a bad light on us. But you know what I want to say? I begged you for 15 years to go visit and you never visited one soul. It works both ways. Don't get quiet on me now. It works both ways. The very people that complain about people, nobody come to see me, nobody call me, they never call nobody. They never visit nobody. A man has friends, got to show himself friendly. It works. I can't believe that a person would say, nobody from church come to visit me. Don't that dawn on you? I never went visiting one time. Not one. Wouldn't it? How many of you have sat right here and sat right here and said, I wish they'd fix that light right there. That light just aggravates a fire out of me. And that's not a new thing. The light right over my head used to go out all the time, up in Marion, all the time. I'm not making this up. See where I sit right here? I used to do that all the time. During church, it'd go out. We'd put another in, it'd go out. I'd sit over there, that would go out. I'd drive down the street lots of times, and the street lights would go out. That's the truth. I don't know what that is. I think I do. Some following me around. That has something to do with lights going out. You think I'm lying, buddy. It ain't, it's happened over and over. I've had ceiling fans over my head stop and start going the other way and smell come out in the church like something burning. So, but don't sit there and say, why don't they fix that light? I wish somebody fix Why don't you fix it? Amen. Have you, hey, you take an evening going to picnic? Do you ever take an evening right up on Grandfather Mountain? Do you ever take an evening right up on uh, up to Steel Creek? Nothing wrong with that. I hope everybody gets to do it. I ain't got to this year. Do you ever take an evening and get to go down to South Mountain, go up, go up on Mount Mitchell? All those places are lovely. You ought to do it. What about this? Let's take an evening and go up to church and cut weeds and, and paint around them bathrooms and fix everything, have everything shiny and smelling good. Sunday morning, do you pass the work test? Whew. Thank you, Bobby. I thought everybody died in the middle of that. So I'm scared. How am I going to get them all out of here? They're going to accuse me of murder. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. What about cleaning them buses? Why should the bus captain have to clean their own bus, do all the work, visit the kids, get them here? Somebody said, shoot, them buses are nasty. Well, a mop and a broom will fit your hand real good if you wasn't too lazy and sorry to do it. I'm just saying, don't fuss about your church. Stuff being done in church if you won't do nothing. Amen. Spray them weed. Get your CDLs, man. Go get your CDL. Why come nobody won't do nothing in this church? Uh, you. I'm doing mine, John. I'm doing mine and part of yours. Yes, it is. Amen. Woo! Preach it, Mother Daddy. I'll relive that dream if y'all mess with me. <laughs> probably be glad, wouldn't you? You'd probably say, yeah, go on. You passed the work test. We need all the stuff back there around them classrooms painted. What a ministry that'd be. Number six, the witnessing test. The witnessing test. The witnessing test. Brag on the Lord Jesus Christ enough to make people want him. I said, you'd be surprised how dumb people are about the Bible. I, and, and it's awful. I was at a Chinese restaurant one day, and I always try to witness them people. And they're sweet. They're all nice. And the girl that waited on me, and I try to leave my track or be a witness to them. Well, the woman who took, took my money at the, at the uh, thing, it was down there in Hickory. I was down there one day. I thought, man, I'd like to have some of them shrimp and rice. And I was starving, and I went in there. And, and got me a plate of that stuff. And I was witnessing this woman, and she said, oh, yeah. I said, I said, do you remember that Jesus loves you? And she said, what? I said, Jesus, he loves you. And I went like that, and she went. <laughs> so I was pointing at the ceiling. I said, no, no, Jesus, Jesus. How do you say Jesus in Chinese? I said, he loves, <laughs> loves you. <laughs> And, and she never could get it, never could get it. And I thought, Lord, we need some Chinese tracks. Lord, listen, we, like every church, are giving account to God one day for walking right by people in restaurants, letting them wait on us in the grocery store, 
People right beside where we live and never witness. Are you going to pass the witnessing test? Do you witness? Listen, them bumper stickers, that's the easiest, cheapest. If you can't witness with a bumper sticker, you really in bad shape. Get you one of them. Caitlin, we got him right there. Get you one after church. Put it on your, I get compliments and other things all the time on my bumper stickers. There's one guy right by and he'll go, yeah, one guy come back by me the other day and he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Other people do other things. Uh, but it's uh, but it's okay. That's okay, man. I mean, you take a stand one way or the other. Let them know who side y'all. Hey, pass the witnessing test. Pass the witnessing test. And then lastly, lastly, number seven, the waiting test. The waiting test. Now the Bible said that we are to wait for His Son from heaven. We are to wait for His Son. From heaven. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 said, Wait for him. Wait for him. You know why this place ain't packed full in here tonight? People ain't waiting on the Lord to come back. I heard a story about this girl and her boyfriend, fiance, whatever, went off to the army or something like that. And uh, he'd write her a letter. Honey, I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to be with you again. Darling, you have all my heart, all that kind of stuff, you know. She'd go to the mailbox, get that letter and read it and just say, oh, I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see him. His letters thrill my heart. He should go the next week. There'd be another letter. He's over in Vietnam or somewhere. Oh, honey, I love you. I can't wait to see you. I miss you so bad. Oh, no, no, no. Same old bull boy's tell girls, and, uh, and, and she said, oh, I love him. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Oh, I just can't wait to see him. Uh, and, then, and then one day she started messing around with some other guy and started going out to some other places. And she didn't go to the mailbox for a while. And she had two or three letters, and, and uh, she looked one, didn't even open it. Looked another one, didn't even open it. Looked another one, ah, I'm busy. She quit reading these letters. You know Why? Her heart got somewhere else. People, we're supposed to be waiting on the Lord to come. We're supposed to be reading that love letter, 66 of them right there in your lap. You have 66 love letters from God. Right to you. And all, listen, if you, if you really like somebody and they write you a letter, you don't just read it one time. You read it over and over and over and over again, don't you? And once in a while, you'll be sitting at home and you'll get out your old letters and read them and it just thrills your heart again. That's the way that book ought to be to every person here tonight. Amen. We ought to wait for his son. It ought to mean something to you. When you lay that book down and all you do is want to watch TV and movies and stuff, you ain't waiting on the Lord to come back. You're cheating on him. You wouldn't care if he never comes back. You're having too good a time in this world. You pass the waiting stand by our heads for prayer the test of a Christian the test of a poor Christian Miss Desi's coming now if you felt a little bit of guilt during any of this service tonight God spoke to your heart for heaven's sake don't stand there and say well that was for somebody else say Lord that was for me Let's do business with God right now. She's playing. She's playing right now. Father, I pray right now. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us not to be hard-hearted. Help us to be tender-hearted, Lord. Help us to be tender-hearted. God, please. God, please. Help us to be tender-hearted. God, help us not to be hard and against the Word of God. Please. Please, Lord. Help us not to be hard-hearted. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to be soft-hearted, tender to the work of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, help us. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd help our church. God, give us workers. Give us people that'll be, that'll put their heart in this thing, Lord, and say, thank God I'm a part of Shining Light Baptist Church. And I'm gonna be the best member I can possibly be for the glory of God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. God, help us tonight. Touch this place. Cause it to go and grow, glow for the glory of God. We'll 
Thank you for it. Thank you for these on the altar tonight. Thank you for this big crowd of people coming out on Sunday night. Pray that you bless every one of them. Do what ought to be done in their hearts. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. We love you. In Jesus' name. People's praying here tonight. People's praying here tonight. You let God speak your heart tonight. You let God speak your heart. Hallelujah. 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 We're still praying. Amen. Amen.